Hey everybody, it's Cameron here, coming to you from the Sunshine Coast, Australia, where I am working as part of the Galaxy Australia team. And I'm going to be showing you a bit today about tool development for Galaxy, so how we can get our command line tools into Galaxy looking like this, where our end users can find them and use them easily. Okay, so I'm going to start by giving you a quick overview of the tool wrapping process. So before you get started, you should really have a look at the tool shed and make sure that the tool you're looking to wrap doesn't already exist. There are many, many thousands of tools on, on the tool shed that are not available or installed in your local Galaxy. So have a look there first, have a search for your tool, and uh, yeah, it might already be there and you can save yourself the effort. Um, so if you decide that you definitely want to wrap this tool, the first step is to get on the command line and conda install your package. And this gives you a chance to test out the tool on the command line. So make sure that it's working and also get familiar with how the tool works and what the parameters are that you're interested in wrapping. So with this done, the next stage is actually building your tool XML file and testing it with Planemo. So this will give you a chance to make sure that your tool works and you can also visualize it in the Galaxy interface with the Planemo serve function. Finally, if you decide you're happy with your tool, you can publish it to the tool shed, either using Planemo to push it directly, or you can make a pull request to Tools IUC on GitHub, where your tool will undergo some review and ultimately um, be published under a more credible um, tool shed user. Then finally, when your tool is available on the tool shed, you can make a request to your local Galaxy admin to install that tool. So today we're going to be using the SeekTK tool. So this is a command line tool that's available as a Conda package, which makes wrapping a Galaxy tool with it fairly straightforward. If you're looking at wrapping a tool which does not have a Conda package, you'll have to build a Conda package yourself, which is quite an involved process that we won't cover here in this tutorial. So today we're going to be focusing on testing your tool on the command line, building our XML file, and testing it with Planemo. We're going to be using the Planemo Read the Docs page mostly. Um, so I've got really good documentation here on how to get started with tool development. It also introduces you to Planemo, which is a really handy command line tool, um, which really helps with bootstrapping um, tool development and also takes you through the various steps of the tool development lifecycle. Okay, so I've just split the screen to the side there so you can see everything that's going on. Um, I just thought I'd start by giving you these URLs here. Um, these should be linked in, in the documentation or what have you um, when you find this video. Um, but we have the Plenium Read the Docs page that we're on right now, and I'll be taking you through that. Also, I'll probably be referring to the Galaxy Project Docs on the tool XML schema. So that is this site here, um, and it's got a fairly comprehensive rundown of the schema of the XML file that we will be creating today. Um, so as a tool developer, I'm constantly going back to refer to this for all of the, the teeny niche little uh, functionalities that Galaxy tools have. So we're definitely not going to cover all of this today, but there's a lot of resources there to help you solve the various problems that you come across with tool development. And yeah, it's just a great reference um, going into the future um, alongside plenty more docs themselves. Then the last link that I've got here is the Tools IUC repo. So this is Galaxy Project's um, most reputable tools, if you like. So this is just a GitHub repo. And it's I'm showing you this because it's a good place to jump to. If we go to Tools, there's heaps of tools in here. And you, you can consider these as being best practice Galaxy tools. So um, I, I'll very often, like I've got a clone of this repo. I'll very often open it up and go searching for examples of how uh, various bits of uh, tool XML syntax are used, um, and then you can you can sort of see design patterns that other people have used as well to solve various problems. So really nice reference in there for um, code to review um, to understand some of the more advanced concepts, but I won't be talking about that really anymore today. Um, so yeah, I'll assume that you've grabbed those links from somewhere. I'll get rid of this. Uh, jump back to Plenium, Plenium Docs. 
Okay, so we'll get started with just installing uh, Plinimo. It should be very simple. This whole tutorial assumes that you're on a Unix command line. So if you're on a Linux system or Mac, then you'll already have that when you open up the terminal. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, you'll need to install and activate WSL, which in Windows, if, if you're on a new Windows distribution, you can just open up a command line and say WSL install, install, sorry. And then you should just be able to run WSL from the command line and you will get a Unix shell inside um, Windows. Yeah, this should be fairly simple. Um, I already have plenty more installed here, uh, so I won't go through this, but it should be as simple as running these three commands here. So um, the first step here is, uh, well, we assume that you have Python 3 installed. You use the module VM to create a VM called Planemo. That will create a, a folder in your working directory called Planemo. I'll actually just run this to show you. Um, so I'm just pasting that command in here. And that took a second to run, but that's fine. So now we have a directory in here called Planemo. We can activate this by saying dot, which is basically read this file I'm going to give you into the current shell, Planemo, bin, activate. So this, this procedure here, if you've not used virtual environment before, this is something you will just be doing over and over again. And there are ways to streamline that because um, it's quite repetitive, but I won't talk about that um, today. So that activates your Planemo environment. You'll get this little um, prompt here that says you're in the Planemo environment now. And you say, cool, that's what I want. Um, so that's step two done. We're in our virtual environment. Um, and then we can pip install Planemo in here. And the reason we create a virtual environment is we don't want to install Planemo on top of everything else that we have um, in our Python libraries, because uh, eventually that will just create a mess. And the Planemo dependencies, of which there are a lot, they will just conflict with everything else in your system, and you'll get a huge headache. So we use virtual environments to isolate different programs um, dependencies from each other. So we're in our Planemo environment now. I already have Planemo, so I won't run this. OK, so I'll just demonstrate here. Planemo. Oh, yeah, we can see all the stuff that Plinimo can do. We're going to use a teeny, teeny little sliver of this functionality today. Um, yeah, so don't worry about all of that. I honestly don't know what most of that stuff is doing. There are a few little things here that we're going to be using today. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all we're going to uh, cover for installation side of things. Hopefully you managed to get through that without too many difficulties. So now we will jump on to building Galaxy tools. And this will take us through the rest of our tutorial today. Um, the basics is where we're going to start. So what we're doing here is we have a conda package, seekdk. So this is a, a fairly well-known bioinformatics tool. And it's got a whole bunch of subcommands within it. Um, it's pretty much a package for manipulating biological sequences and the various file types that you have there. So you do not necessarily need to have Conda installed and go through all of this Conda stuff for this tutorial. You can actually go through most of this tutorial without using Conda. So I will demonstrate that in here. But if you don't have Conda installed, I wouldn't stress about it for now. It is something. It is a tool that you're going to want to use um, down the line for sure if you aren't using it already. Um, so I think I already have a Conda environment for CTK. CTK. It's actually not a Conda environment. It's a Mamba environment. OK, so I've got CTK activated. CTK seek. And yeah, that just shows us CTK seek does exist and gives us a bit of the usage information. So yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that, but you don't have to do that. Um, you don't have to use CTK um, directly for this tutorial. You can just go through the rest of this with practically a, just a code editor and just copy the XML text from here. Um, OK, so I've got CTK seek, so I can look at it and see what it does. Next step is I'm going to get hold of some data, some test data, to actually demonstrate the usage of this tool. So I'm just going to wget this fast Q file that was very quick fantastic 
Um, okay, so that gives me a test file. Then I can run ctkseq on it. So I'm turning this fastq file into a fasta file. Super basic stuff. Boom, done. So I now have two dot fasta and two dot fastq. These are two very small um, fasta and fastq files. We can see them printed out here. They're very tiny files, um, just for testing and developing this tool. Uh, so move on a little bit. So we're going to do our first Planemo command, which is a tool in it. And we're going to tell it the ID we want it to create this tool with and the name that we want to give the tool. And what this tool in it um, command is doing is it's just bootstrapping our tool XML. So when it comes to building a Galaxy tool, all we're effectively doing the majority of the time is writing an elaborate XML file. So an entire Galaxy tool can be encompassed by just one XML file. Um, so yeah, we're just bootstrapping this right now. So we're just going to get a very, very super minimalistic basic um, XML file. Of course. OK, so Ponymo command not found because I'm not in the Ponymo environment anymore. OK, so back in Ponymo. OK, so tool in it. So we're written to ctkc.xml. Let's take a look. Yes, we have an XML file now. Cool. So Planemo has just very quickly spat out a little bit of boilerplate XML. And if we glance back to the docs here, it should look something like this. Um, what I'm going to do now is just jump to my code editor. So I've got this folder open in VS Code. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier for you guys to, I'm just going to get rid of this blank virtual environment that I don't need. Um, yeah, much easier for you guys to visualize, I think, what's going on here um, if I have it open in VS Code. So here's our fast file that we produced, the fastq file that we just grabbed from GitHub, and our XML file, which does look um, pretty close to what we've got, and probably exactly the same as what we've got in the, the docs. Cool. So yeah, I'll spend a little bit of time, or we will spend a a little bit of time manually um, coding up this XML file here. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to do a little bit more bootstrapping with Planemo tool in it. You'll see uh, some of the extra functionality that's baked in there that we can get out of it. So um, the idea is here, we want to just automate as much of this stuff as we can, really. Um, so here we have a slightly more elaborate tool in it. Um, so we're saying, here's the ID, here's the name, we've covered this already. Now we're giving it a requirement. So we want CTK version 1.2. Um, and we have an example command. So this is CTK seek sequence. So this is the command we just ran above. Um, and then we have an example input, which we just downloaded, and an example output, which we just created. So we're feeding a little bit more information to tool in it this time, and it's going to use that information to flesh out our XML file just a little bit more. So I'll give that a try here. And if I look back at VS Code, you can see that this has gotten a little bit bigger. Since last time, we've got a requirements section. So this is basically telling Galaxy, we need a package. It's a Conda package. Um, so it infers that it's a Conda package. Um, and the version is going to be 1.2, and it's called seekTK. So that's going to, when Galaxy goes to run this tool, that is going to pull down the appropriate Conda package or singularity um, image, depending on how Galaxy is deciding to run this. Um, we don't have to worry about that as developers. We can just say package seekTK. Uh, then we have our exa example command that we put in here. Um, so that gives us a very basic command section. We have inputs and outputs now as well, which is very nice. So the inputs here, this is going to create an input in the tool form on Galaxy. So it's going to tell the user, hey, we're looking for an input of type fastq. And then when the tool is run, it's going to produce this output here. So what we're looking at now is a very, very basic MVP of how a Galaxy tool might look. We have an input and an output, a command that's going to be run on those, input one, output one. And we've got a package that Galaxy is going to be pulling to run this. OK, back to our docs. So now we're adding just a little bit more in here again. 
Uh, so this is all the same. Now we're adding in a test case. So it has an input and it has an output, so it can create a test case out of that. We're also giving it a URL to cite the CTK software and saying help from command. And this is the part which won't work if you don't have this conduit installed. Um, so maybe let's just skip that part out for now. You can quite easily just copy and paste help text in there. But what it would do is it would take um, the output from CTK seek as um, written on the command line. And it will take the output from that and put it into this help text section. Um, yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. You can you can either write this yourself or you can copy and paste it from the GitHub or whatever. Usually I'll end up writing the help section kind of myself and it'll, it'll be something I've copied and pasted from GitHub and I'll, I'll rewrite it a little bit so that it's appropriate for the Galaxy tool. Um, so yeah, okay, let's, I'm gonna give this a try but I'm gonna skip the help from command part. Okie doke, so we've got a little bit more now. We've got our, so our help section is still blank, but we do have citations now. And what about tests? Yeah, here we go, we've got a test section. It just says, here's a test, put in this parameter here, which is gonna be um, this data set, and we're gonna expect the output to be this data set here. So this is a very, very basic minimalistic test. Um, Kidoke, so that's getting fleshed out a little bit more. I said that I'd, I'd copy and paste something in here for the help section, I'll do that now. So I'll just grab this text here, and let's, where are we, help section. I'll just chuck that in here. Okay, that looks good, happy with that. Planemo L, okay, so we're coming to our next Planemo command here. So, the full command is planemo lint, and most of planemo's commands are shortened to just single letters because we're lazy and we don't want to type them all out. But either, of course, will work, planemo lint, and planemo will go through our XML file and just make sure that it finds all the essential components and nothing out of place. And it seems to like the schema. Um, seems to like the format of our XML file that we've created. So that's great, we've passed the linting. And because we've got our little automated test in here, we can also run some automated testing. And it's a teeny, teeny little test. Uh, might take plenty more seconds to actually run this because it's got to pull the Conda package and start up a Galaxy backend to run the test within. But be patient and you should see some green writing at the end of it. Okay, so there we have it. Our first test with Planemo has passed. Hopefully yours has too. Um, if not, go back and have a look at your tool XML and see if something somehow went wrong with it. At this point, it's most likely gonna be some typo or something that you made in it because Planemo should not make mistakes, um, especially when we're copying and pasting like this. Um, okay, so Go on and demonstrate another Planemo command, Planemo serve. This one is very useful, mostly for looking at the tool interface and seeing, is this what the user, um, is this gonna be intuitive for the user? Um, this is especially useful when we get to more complex sets of inputs in our tool XML. It can be quite hard to visualize how that's gonna look to a user. Um, so this is again a command that takes quite a while to run. So be prepared to go make a coffee or something, especially when this runs for the first time, because it's got to build a Galaxy user interface to serve this in. So what Planemo is going to do now is it's going to run a Galaxy backend, it's going to build a Galaxy client, and it's going to run the client against the backend with your tool embedded inside it. Pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so give this a minute to run, and then you should be able to open up in your browser and check it out. Okay, that went pretty quick for me. I think because I already have a cached Galaxy instance on this machine, it's probably reusing that. So um, hopefully the next time you run this, it should um, be a little quicker.
because it doesn't have to rebuild everything from scratch. So I'm just going to open up this URL here. And here we go. We've got our own little mini galaxy, which is very, very minimalistic and blank. Um, but we do have convert to faster CTK. So we have one tool in here, effectively, the tool that we're building right now. So we, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. If we check this out, we'll see we have, it's very basic, we have one input, um, which is actually still called input one, so we should probably give that a proper name. Uh, it says no fastq data set available, so if I actually want to test this out, I can. I can say, let's choose a local file, tutorial. Okay, so I want to upload, yeah, I actually only need the fastq file. Okay, so I've got my fastq file here, so I've got the only required input to run this, run the tool. And this should be super, super quick because it's the tiniest little data set. There we go, done. And let's just have a peek at that. Yes, this is the FASTA file that we want as our output. So um, the very basic tool that we've made looks fine in Galaxy and it works, um, which it should do because it passed tests. <clears throat> OK, so back to our tutorial. And I'm just going to, this, this uh, Planemo server will keep running forever until you kill it. So I'll just control and see that to get my command line back. OK, now it's over. OK, so that was Planemo serve. OK, I took a little break, but I'm back now. Um, so we've run through bootstrapping our tool using Planemo on the command line. So thus far, we have not really done much coding of our own. We're just relying on, on what Planemo has given us, um, which is a great start. Um, but there's a lot more that we can incorporate into the Galaxy tools and start to get a little more complex. Um, so simple parameters. Um, we're going to start adding some more parameters to this tool. So if we look at the help for the command line tool, we'll see that there's a bunch of different parameters that CTK can take. So we're just going to start adding those in um, one by one, um, which is super easy to do. So uh, we've got this dash V parameter. So this is a really simple, it's on or off uh, parameter. Um, so this is the kind of uh, parameter tag that we can add in our tool XML to expose this parameter to our users. Um, and you'll often find that the command line tool might have quite a few parameters. It might have 10 or 20 parameters if it's a more complex tool. You don't have to wrap all of those parameters. Um, so we'll often just wrap uh, the parameters that we think most users will require. Um, you can always add, have more added at a later date. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to start by adding this dash V parameter here, um, which gives us uh, shift quality by dash Q. Um, OK, so this is what it looks like. A parameter has got a name, it's got a type, it's got a label, um, and usually it's got a help as well. So this is just a text that will be displayed below this field for the user. Uh, so this is a Boolean, which means it's going to be a little toggle button in the UI. So it's either going to be on or off. And then for Booleans, we have this really handy true value false value. So if it's switched off by the user, um, this shift quality um, parameter, it will resolve to nothing when we're building the command. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Um, true value dash V. So if, sh if shift quality is true, it'll resolve to dash V, um, which is what is used in the command line. So I'm just going to copy this and put it into my tool. So where are we? Inputs, parameters, we're adding another parameter. So what we mean by resolving this as a variable, so we've got our tiny, tiny little command section up here. Um, so this is the command that is, is being built to run this tool. Um, so there's kind of two layers to this. The first layer is the command that will be built by Galaxy. Um, and then actually running the command itself. So 
you've you kind of got to think in two layers here. The first layer is cheetah code, which is this stuff here. And then you've got to also think in bash, which is um, everything after that, really. So this stuff here will, will be as we see it. This will be resolved to some file name. And so the output. And then we've got this little redirect symbol. So that will be the same. Um, so you've got to think about what this looks like in Cheetah, and then once Cheetah has rendered this code, what it's going to look like in Bash so that it's still syntactically correct. Um, so for this shift quality thing here, um, the parameter will just be add, added in like this. Um, yeah, so Cheetah will figure out what the value of shift quality is, if it's true, it's going to insert dash v. If it's false, it's going to just insert nothing. So let's have a think about what this is going to look like. So if it's true, um, it's going to resolve to dash v. So the command will end up looking like this. If it's false, then this will resolve to nothing. So the command will look like this. So we basically just omitted that flag. Um, and that's why the true value false value switch is really nice. Um, just a very quick way of resolving these variables to um, parameters on the command line. Cool. So that's our first manually inserted parameter, um, which we've um, mixed into the command section ourselves. OK, so <clears throat> moving on, we've got two more CTK seek parameters. And these guys are not Booleans. These are type integers. So we would expect something like dash Q 30 dash, dash X, um, whatever. So some, some integer parameter is going to be supplied here. So this is going to look a little bit different how we render it on the command line. So you can go on and you can copy and paste these parameters in, but I would maybe suggest typing them out now, just so that you can get used to um, all of these different attributes that a parameter is supposed to have. Okay, so adding in those additional parameters. So you'll see we've got a min and a max in here as well. So um, that is another set of attributes that come with integers. So this will do a bit of validation on the client side. So when the user is putting in a number, this is forcing it to be obviously between these two values here, and they'll get an error or something if they try to submit a value above that. So that's a nice little bit of validation. And this variable here now, it's not a Boolean, so this is going to act quite differently, um, more intuitively, I think. Quality min, this variable in the command section, that's just going to resolve to whatever number it's set to. So that's simple. Um, with that in mind, how to go at filling out these two variables here, um, these two parameters in the command section and see what you get. OK, so you should have got something that looks like this. So we say Q is going to be quality min and X is going to be quality max. So let's just have a think again about how this is going to be resolved by Cheetah. So let's assume Q was set to, I don't know, 30. I don't know what makes sense for this tool. And quality max was set to 100. So the user is saying quality has got to be between 30 and 100. Um, this is what the command is going to end up rendering like. And then shift quality is going to end up being you know, either nothing or dash V again. So this is how our command is going to look. Does this make sense to bash? Yes, it does. It looks good. Um, so I tend to be thinking um, you know, every now and then, just how is this going to look to bash? Does, does it all make sense? Is it syntactically correct? And so on. Um, of course, you'll find out when you try to test the tool whether it is or not. So uh, since this line is going to start getting a little longer, what I'm going to do now is start splitting this into just one, one parameter per line. Uh, yeah, that should do the trick. Yeah, so something that um, is worth thinking about with Cheetah when it's resolving this into um, a line of bash 
is that this whole section here, even though this is like seven or eight lines, this is going to be resolved into a single line as far as bash is concerned. So I don't need to worry about these line breaks here, um, breaking the flow of logic. Bash is going to just interpret this all as one line. Um, so that's really nice for splitting our um, parameters onto different lines because we can make this really readable. And there'll be lots of um, logic that might be threaded into here, which will make it you know, quite messy otherwise. So it's really nice to be able to do that. But what we do have to bear in mind is if I were to insert another command here, which should be on a new line for bash, it's a new command. Say if I'm just going to do a word count on a file or, or whatever, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. You've always got to connect these uh, with a, a double ampersand, um, because otherwise it's going to treat this command as though it was an extension to the line above it. Because remember, this is all going to be read as one line. Um, so we've got to join subsequent commands in series with these double ampersands. You'll see that all over the place in Galaxy Tools. I like to put them at the start of the, the start of each command. I find that a bit more readable than uh, putting them at the end, like a lot of people do. But personal preference. Just worth keeping that in mind. All right, so you should end up with something now that looks a bit like this. Um, if you want to make sure that this is correct, you can go ahead and run a Planemo test again. Uh, it's good to do that at regular intervals just to make sure that you've not introduced a bug somewhere in your code. Um, but now we're going to continue on to conditional parameters. So this is a nice feature because it allows us to show sets of parameters um, based on a condition. And a really common example of this is we'll have a little checkbox in the tool that says advanced options. And when people flick that on, it will reveal a whole new section of advanced parameters that we would rather hide from novice users. So we're going to go and add our first conditional parameter into the tool. All right, so our first example here, dash m file. Um, so we're providing a file here, but this is an optional parameter. So the user doesn't have to declare this if they don't want to. So what we can do here, uh, there's sort of two stages to this. We can add this optional equals true attribute to our parameter. So that will tell the Galaxy client, this is, this is optional. Like They don't have to fill out this field. Um, it won't force them to fill out that field. So we'll go ahead and add that into our tool, XML. A new parameter. OK, now when we come to referring to this variable, mask regions, in our command section, uh, this is where we've got to be a little bit more careful because so it's going to be dash m mask regions. Um, but mask regions is optional. So this can resolve to nothing or none. Um, and then we're going to end up with this dash m with probably nothing after it. And that's going to be a problem when this, res this resolves to bash. So let's just assume that this resolves to nothing. We're going to end up with a command that looks kind of like this. And if the tool, seek seek gets this option m with no value, it's going to give us an error, because it expects a value for dash m. So this is where we have to start using a bit of cheetah templating code, which um, in this case will look a bit like this. So we can say, if mask regions, so this is either going to be nothing, or it's going to be a number, or sorry, a file name. So if mask regions dash m is going to be whatever this whatever file path this resolves to. Um, otherwise, it's going to be nothing. So this is our first conditional statement now, which allows us to insert this optional value. Okay, now we've got two more parameters for the tool to insert here, and this is where things start to get a little tricky. Um, you'll get these parameters and tools where they only make sense if another parameter has been enabled, for example. Um, so this is where conditional parameters become really important. So in this case, we have dash s integer for a random seed. And then we have a dash f for a float, sample float fraction of sequences. 
So in this case, the dash s random seed parameter should only be seen or used if the sample parameter is set. So we have a conditional with the name sample. And the first thing that we have in here is a Boolean. So this is going to be, again, the little toggle in the user interface. We're going to call it sample selector. And we're telling the user a sample fraction of sequences. So this is either going to be a yes or no. When value is true, um, we're going to have these f and s, s, f and s arguments available. We're going to have these fraction and seed parameters available to the user. And if the value is false, so if they've turned off sample selector, then we're just going to show nothing. So we're, we're pretty much expanding um, or hiding this section with just two parameters in it. So I'm just going to copy that into my code, again, into the input parameters section. Tidy that up a little bit. OK. And again, going back to our command section, we're going to have to use a little bit of this cheetah logic to get this to render correctly. So I've just copied and pasted this in. So we say, if sample.sample selector, then dash f is going to be sample fraction, and dash s is going to be sample.seed. So this is the first time we've seen this dot notation here. So if I jump to sample, um, so the conditional is called sample, and then we've got three parameters inside it. So fraction, for example, we refer to that as sample.fraction, because fraction is nested inside sample. So that gives us our conditional statement. The user can enable sample selector, and then they can add these fraction and seed arguments. Otherwise, this will just be hidden, and this section of the code will just resolve to nothing. And whoops, I put that at the end of the command line instead of where it should be. So, um, so yeah, the parameters want to be in the middle. OK, so you should have something that looks a little like this. Again, you can plenty mode test this to make sure that everything is looking good. And just before we continue, you'll um, remember I mentioned earlier about having a little toggle button for the advanced section in, in a tool interface. So what we've done here is just converted um, the parameters that we've created above into an advanced section. So we've got a conditional here, um, name advanced. So we've got a simple and advanced section inside of that. So this, this will basically create a, a toggle button here for advanced settings. When the user switches this on, we'll get this when value is advanced section. So here's all of our advanced options for the tool. Um, and yeah, you might like to give that a go. If you update your code to look like this, you can just copy and paste it across. If you run a plenty more serve, um, on this code, you'll you'll get an idea of how that looks and how it works. Uh, it's quite a good way to play with conditionals and see how they act. OK, so that's um, our basic logic of um, wrapping a tool is kind of done. So how we create parameters and then refer to them in the command section, that's the, the main part of writing a Galaxy tool. Um, so now we're just going to cover a couple of other little extra bits um, before we complete the tutorial. So the first is wrapping a script, and the second is using macros to reduce repetitive code. Um, so wrapping a script is something that we generally try not to do. We try to source as much of the code as we can from Conda packages and containers, um, because that makes it reproducible and transparent. But sometimes we will add a, a bit of Perl or Python um, script into the tool. And that allows us to just do a little bit of um, logic, a little bit of plumbing, maybe, that would be a bit too complex in the command section itself. Um, OK, so we've got a, a beautiful little Perl script here that we're going to just copy into our development directory. So I'm just going to create straight in here, um, I'm just going to call it script.perl. That's fine. Dump the code in there. And I'm not going to read this at all. I just assume that this does something. 
Um, so now at some point in our bash script here in the command section, we might want to refer to this script. We might want to run the script on some data, for example. And to do that, I've just created uh, a couple of blank lines here. You would just call Perl. So I've used a little ampersand here because we're writing a new command. Uh, and we pass to it this special variable. And there's a few special variables um, in the, the cheetah context here. So this is a cheetah thing. Um, tool directory, that's going to expand to this directory here, wherever this is located on our Galaxy server. Um, slash, I just called it script.pl. And then whatever arguments we're going to pass to it. So say we're going to pass, um, I guess that should be input one in this case. This, this probably makes no sense in the context of this tool, I should add. Um, but just as an example, if we're going to do some post-processing, I suppose it might look something like just create a file called output.tsv and write our output from CTK seek to that file. And then this would be And we always add single quotes to our expanded file paths because we don't know if they might include a space in them um, or some strange character. So just to be safe, we always enclose them in single quotes. Um, so yeah, assuming this Perl script here would do some sort of po post-processing on this file here, this is kind of how we would incorporate it into the tool wrapper. OK, so that's how we incorporate a external script into our command section. The last thing we're going to cover is macros. So you can use this uh, tool init flag um, macros to bootstrap a macro section for you. I'm just going to copy and paste this into my existing bit of code here um, so that I don't overwrite it. OK, so I'm going to put this in right at the top. So the first thing is we declare a macros section, and we say import macros.xml. So this file is going to have to exist in our directory here. So I just created that file there. So all we're doing here is adding a macro for citations. So a macro is just any little chunk of XML code that we would like to have encapsulated and then inserted into our main XML file here. So um, citations is a, a pretty common one. We, we don't want this cluttering up the main tool XML file. So we export that code to our macros file. So I'm just going to insert that in there. So OK, so we have two macros here. We have requirements and citations. So if I go back to our main XML file, you'll see that um, in the code I copied here, we've already expanded requirements. So this is pretty much going to spit out this piece of code here. Um, that's what we've got here. Yeah. So I can delete that now. That's been abstracted away. So it's made our XML code a little bit tidier. And then the other one I want to expand away down the bottom here is our citations. So I'm just going to remove that whole citation section and expand it. Citations. So that should expand that there. Cool. So this is a, a nice way to try and make our main tool XML a little bit less bulky. So we can take some of these um, big chunks of code out of there and have them in our macros file. And this is especially a useful pattern when people are making tool suites. So when you have more than one of these um, tool XMLs, you don't want to have to write the requirements for every file and the citations for every file. So often, every tool will import these from a single macros file. So they're shared across the tool suite. OK, and that is the basic intro to tool wrapping on Galaxy. Um, there's a couple of useful links here that you can go on to check out. And there will also be an advanced tool development topics as well. Um, we'll hopefully make a video for that too, so we can get into some of the more um, complex aspects of tool development. There is also the Galaxy Tool XML syntax, which I've pointed out to you already. 
um, a big list of development resources, and then a bit more of a guide to cheetah templating as well, because this was certainly new to me when I got into Galaxy tool development. And it can get a little bit weird sometimes, I'll, I'll just warn you. So um, yeah, it's good to have a resource there to check out for um, information on how Cheetah is working. Now, just before we finish up, there's one last thing that I should run you through quickly, and that is how to get your tool onto the tool shed where Galaxy administrators can install it. So I'm just going to go quickly and have a look and see if we can find the existing seek TK. So here it is. This one has been pushed to the tool shed by IUC. So somebody has made a pull request to tool IUC's GitHub and their automated workflow gets it onto the tool shed. Um, this is a great way of doing it rather than pushing things manually under your own name. If you make a pull request to, to tools IUC, um, that will undergo a thorough review process and your tool, uh, like this one here, will be more reputable on the tool shed. So at Galaxy Australia, if we have a tool request for something that's in the tool shed under IUC, we just install it straight away because we know it will work, it's been tested, um, and it's been wrapped properly. Um, so yeah, let's just take a quick look at this repository. So here we have SeekTK. Um, this is the real SeekTK, not the one that we just made. Um, bit of a description um, and a few links here, really. Um, so once you get a tool into the tool shed like this, um, your job as a tool developer is pretty much done. Now it's up to Galaxy administrators to um, install this tool to their Galaxy server. So once you get to this point here, you want to be making a support ticket or however you co contact a Galaxy server and make a request for them to install this tool here. And you'll often you'll give them a link to this repository, which will be this one here, to let them know which tool exactly it is you want them to install. So how do we get our tool in here? So if we jump back to Planemo again, we'll see this section, publishing to the toolshed. So everything you need to know is in here. Um, we start by using the Planemo config init command to create yourself um, an account on the toolshed. So if you don't want to use tools IUC, you're going to have to go down this pathway and create your own account under the toolshed. So that will be that's a place on the toolshed for you to push your tool then you want to create a repository. Um, and this is something that you will run in um, the, the tool repository that we've been developing. So you'll run this in here, and it will generate this .shed.yaml file. And this gives Planemo everything it needs to know to push your tool to the tool shed. So let's just take a look at one of those. So this one here, I have just gone into Tools IUC and I've copied the real SeekTK shared YAML file. So just to give you an idea, this is roughly what the shared YAML file should look like. We have the category that this tool should fall under inside a Galaxy server. So this will be where it's found in the tool panel. We have description, um, a link to the, the actual SeekTK tool, description, uh, name, and so on. So there's not much to it, but that's the info that Planemo needs to push this tool to the tool shed. Um, so once you have done that, you can do a shed lint, um, but shed create and shed update. These are the two real juicy commands here. So shed create, this is actually going to push this tool here to a tool shed. And while we're developing, we'll push things to test tool shed. So not this one here, there's a separate test server um, specifically for pushing tools that are in development. So um, usually people will push to the test tool shed first, and then when they're really happy with their tool, they want to publish it, then they push it to the real tool shed. Um, so yeah, once you run this, Planemo will push your tool there. It will become available for the public to consume. Um, and then in future, we have the shed update command. So very similar to before. But the shut update tool is just for us to push new versions of our tool 
OK, so that should be enough info for you to figure out how to get your tool wrapped and onto the Galaxy server. So go forth, wrap tools. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the workshop. And thanks for listening and following along.